Hey babes, I'm back with another YouTube video and today as you guys can see we are going to be doing some short duck nails. Now I did already shape these nail tips, I will link them down below and if you're interested in learning exactly how I prefer to shape my duck nail tips, I'll leave a link right in the description box below. Today I'm using one of my favorite cover colors. This color is Flamingo by Young Nails. And normally for my duck nails, I often do a two bead method. Sometimes three if the nail comes out a little flat after the cuticle bead. But for the most part, I'm able to do this in two beads. Now when I'm doing my application on the duck nails, of course, I want the free edge of the nails to be pretty thin. Of course, when you're doing nails, you want the free edge to be thin. But for these duck nails, y'all, yeah, to me, when the free edge be too thick, they just don't give the same look. Here I'm starting to apply my first bead and after making sure all of my acrylic powder is sidewall to sidewall, I'm going to start to drag this down but you guys are going to see that I'm going to start to apply more pressure towards the free edge. Like I said earlier, I do want the free edge to be thin so to speed up the process, I'm going to already do the application thin so that later on I don't have to do too much filing. Also, you guys, I do have some exciting news. I'm going to be hosting a beginner nail class March 19th, and I am going to link down below all the information. It is going to be a beginner course with a full nail kit, and it's going to be a smaller group. So I don't mind doing like the large, you know, group classes. I've been to a couple myself, but I always felt like, okay, if I do a small class, I can make sure that everybody's on the same page, especially if I don't have any other nail techs with me. So if you're interested, comment down below and I'm going to send you the direct link. For reshaping these nails, as always, I'm going to be using this golden bit that I got from Amazon. And typically, I start with debulking the nail, sealing the cuticle area, and then going in with my hand file. And I prefer to do this because, let's say I made the nail too thick, I personally wouldn't want to have to go in with my hand file first when I could just kind of sculpt the nail, debulk it, and then it'll be much easier to reshape afterwards. 
I did also leave this video in real time so that you guys could see exactly what I'm doing. This entire video, probably minus the designs, is going to be in real time so you guys get the real scoop on the application and the refiling details. Really quickly, while I'm shaping these nails, I wanted to talk about how important it is to actually build relationships with your clients. I understand for a lot of people, talking to strangers could be kind of, might mess with your anxiety, or maybe you're just not the type of person that's, you know, people friendly or just not a people person. But I kid you guys not, I definitely feel like I've built really, really strong connections with my clients over the past couple years. And every month I know exactly who's going to come to me. And if they don't come to me, I know, all right, something, something's not right. Something's going on. And I feel like because I know these things, if my clients weren't satisfied or if they really wasn't feeling the energy or just something was off with their nail appointment, they're going to tell me and I could keep my client versus my client not really wanting to speak to me because she don't know too much about me anyway. She may not know my reaction or how I'm going to feel if she's not satisfied with the service. So I definitely appreciate my returning clients every month. I know I'm going to have money coming in. Word of mouth is really, really big if you're trying to build clientele. So the fact that I'm so close with my clients, the second somebody asks them who did their nails, they are instantly pulling up my Instagram. My Instagram is at the top of the search bar and they're going Going to say positive things about me versus oh yeah she does nails really good but I mean she don't really you know and some people want a silent appointment like I've had clients where I was trying to talk to them and very quickly I've noticed that they don't want to talk and I instantly just shut it down get quiet play the music if that's what they prefer but I always try to at least try to start a conversation so it's not awkward and I honestly feel like it just helps me work better when I'm not worried about what my client may be thinking as a lot of you guys already know, I've officially been doing nails for five years. I think around this time, five years ago, is when I took my first client. And y'all, I still have people that come to me from five years ago. I think that was 2019. I still have people that probably haven't been to me since 2020, and they will randomly pop, pop, pop back up. Like, remember I came to you and, you know, you was working in the garage. Yeah, like I came back. And I appreciate them, too, because they come back and they stay like I don't know why they was going for so long. But luckily, I put on a good first impression. And even if I wasn't the cause for why they didn't come back, they were willing to come back when they could. So I really do appreciate that. So if you are somebody that doesn't really like talking to people or you really don't know what to talk about, I kid y'all not, blogs, the shade room, the news will be your best friend. If I'm not too sure what to talk about with a client that morning, I'm not going to lie. Y'all. I'm going to go in the shade room and see what everybody is talking about just to see like, OK, what can I talk about? That's not going to be too invasive to my client. I'm not at all in her business. But I could still have a brief conversation about some type of topic. And if they want to continue, they'll continue to talk about something else. But if not, we could stop it there and let them enjoy the appointment. Enough of my rambling. I am starting to reshape these nails, as you guys can see. And I was using a 8080 grit hand file. Once I'm finished with actually reshaping the nails, that's when you guys see me go back over the nails with my drill bit and start to go back underneath the nails to create that moon cut. I actually used to do nails, at least duck nails, without the moon cut until one of my nail tech homegirls is like, girl, I promise you, you do that moon cut underneath the nails, it's going to look way better. It just adds a touch to the duck nails versus having like that wide, just straight across look. It definitely makes a really big difference. Just take your time when you're doing it. Before buffing my client's nails, I did place a little bit of cuticle oil on top of the nails to go ahead and rub that in. I am going to clean her nails off with alcohol afterwards and have her go wash her hands before moving on and continuing. All right, so time for the designs, and I know my LED lamp is looking busted and worn down back there. I did buy a new one. You guys know I had that glittery, like, diamond pink one, but when I was moving, I don't know where the charger went, and I was trying to see if I could buy a replica charger, 
but I don't know. I really didn't see it on Amazon. I'll probably just have to really search because I absolutely loved that UV light. It's definitely much bigger than this one, but I'm just going to have to use this until I get a new one. So I did just finish going in with some silver gel polish to create a smile line for a bling out French tip. Y'all, if I don't do like some type of line work before I bling out a French tip, to me, it never comes out right. Currently, I'm using my Mia Secret Rhinestone Glue, and I'm also using my Priosin Serenity Crystals as always. I am going to link that down below, and words cannot describe how much I hate using plastic crystals. Like, I had used one, well, not one, I used some on a client some days ago, and the shine is just not the same, just that plastic look. I really just, I'm not with that, so if you're interested in finally switching over to getting you some real crystals, I am going to link that down below. Now it did take me a little minute to actually get into using like the Priosa, the Swarovski, the Serenity crystals, but I kid y'all not, I do like those way better than using the plastic ones. You see a difference, your client's going to see a difference, and if your client cheat on you and go to a nail tech that doesn't have them, she's still going to see that difference. Yeah, look at how smooth the duck nails are. They look so good. Her boyfriend gonna call her and ask her if she was getting the duck bill nails, and it was it was too funny. But moving on, I am gonna be doing a white French tip on the pointer finger and on the pinky. I know that my homegirl really wanted to do like some really pretty spring colors, and I'm also gonna be using some blooming gel from Mia Secret. For the blooming gel, I actually didn't use a smaller brush. I just took the large brush that came in the bottle and I was being very, very careful, basically just outlining the French tip. And then I'm going to go in with my daughter tool and a few colors to activate the blooming gel. Well, not activate it, but you know what I mean.
After going through, I kid you not, like 10 different charms, I finally decided to use that little tiny Hello Kitty charm. It was really cute. And I'm also going to be using a few 3D flowers before I go in with this teal colored gel polish and finish my French tips. Going back in with my rhinestone glue and I'm sure you guys know this but I lost my wax stick like rhinestone picker so I've been using this pencil that one of my charm boxes came with and it's honestly been pretty convenient. Normally I don't use like the little pencils I actually thought that the white residue would get all over the rhinestones but it's not and I'm just going to start to outline this French tip nail add a couple dinks to the thumb and then I'll be top coating these. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I absolutely love these duck nails. I know a lot of people didn't like them at first, but they're definitely starting to grow on me. So if you did enjoy this YouTube video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment down below what you want to see next as well. And I'll see you in my next tutorial.